Today we're tying a hothead damsel. So we're starting off with a number 10 Hannock BL hook. It's a 200. I like the Hannock hooks. They're sharp and they're strong, but you can tie it with any streamer hook. We have a tungsten bead on there this morning, and it's the hot orange 1 8th. I like using the tungsten as you pull it back to the boat. Um, it sinks quickly, and as you pull it back, it really jigs in the water, which moves the pattern quite well. So we're going to start off with some olive thread here. I have olive UTC thread, and we're just going to tie our thread on. So a few wraps here to lock the thread in place. Perfect. Cut this little piece off. We're going to create a thread base on this shank of the hook. So we're wrapping this back to the bend of the hook. And back up to towards the bead. I'll leave a little space between the bead and where my thread is right now. We're going to use our tail material, which is marabou. I have light all of this morning. And I have a piece here already. So what I'm going to do is actually strip off the marabou with my thumb and finger. A nice clump of it here. I'm going to lose that. Strip that down. Switch my fingers up a little bit. And I'm going to cut that clump off. It's a little messy. And put that just behind the bead of the fly on the hook there and wrap this in. So bury all that. Perfect. And we're going to wrap this back towards the bend in the hook. That looks pretty great. So when we get back here, we're going to put a couple wraps underneath the marabou. One there. I usually put one on top again. And another one underneath. Another one on top. This is going to lock in the, the marabou so it doesn't fold underneath the hook when you're stripping that in and, and fishing it. Um, it just helps prevent that. The next thing we're going to do is put in some crinkle flash right here. Crinkle mirror flash in the tail. You don't need to put this in, but I like to add it to my patterns. You can tie some with it and some without it. This just adds an extra flash to the pattern. I feel it brings the fish in from a distance. I also use a lot of uh, UV um, crinkle flash. In the tail materials in my patterns because I like the I believe the UV material helps. But we already have UV today for the whole body of this pattern. You'll see that in a moment. Make sure these are the same length as your t um, the marabou. I'm just going to rotate my vise and tie it on the other side here. I want these to lay flat. There we go. Um, flat against everything. So carefully around that point of the hook if it gets a little bit tight there. Okay, I'll cut those off. Not the marabou, but cut off the, the mirror flash. Now we're going to bring this forward just a little bit and prepare for our next material, which is the UV Brill. So we're having all of UV Brill. And I have a piece here. And make sure the fibers are pointing back. Alright, so right now it's pointing back, which isn't great. We want those the way flat or, uh, towards the back of the hook. Okay, so we're just going to lock that in a few turns of the thread, bring our thread all the way forward. At this point, I'm just going to tie a knot in there in case something happens. And I like using a whip finish, so sort of my whip finish tool, so we're just going to tie that. I'm always doing two whip finishes, so there we go. Just let that hang. We're going to take our brill and wrap this with touching turns forward. Now with my thumb and forefinger with my left hand, I'm just bringing back the fibers of the brill so that they lay towards the back of the hook, the back of our fly here. 
I'll try and pull them back before I wrap them or bury them. I'm wrapping this all the way forward. When we get to the front here, we're going to do a few wraps. to help build it up behind the bead of the, the fly. Take our thread, two wraps on top, two wraps in front, kind of helps lock everything in place. And cut off the extra material. There we go. everything back and we'll build up a bit of a head on the fly here. It's stuck on something there, you can hear it rubbing. And that happened, so I just broke my thread, which is never a good thing. Um, darn. So let me just uh, use the little tool here to pull the bobbin threader back in, because that happens when your time flies. So I'll just get my bobbin threader ready to go and pull that thread through. So it just takes me a moment here to do that. Okay, no need to worry if you break it, don't touch anything. Uh, just let it hang there and then get your th new thread back on top. Uh, what I like to do is if you have enough of that old thread that broke off, let's try and twist it with the new one here. So let's cut this one off here. So just try and twist these together just a little bit and then wrap them both at the same time. to help lock things together. It's not really working that well today. Okay. The fish, the fly is going to fish just well. But okay, we'll get that one here. We're going to tie a couple of whip finishes on top. I'd like to do two. finished what I'm going to do is just add in some glue here so I'm going to take some head cement I don't use a lot of head cement on my patterns but I would suggest if you're learning how to fly fish early stages put some head cement on there keeps the fly patterns lasting a lot longer as you're casting and having fun. Here's the hothead damsel. <laughs> 